All right, see you in a few. John tells me right now he wants me to tell you to get him walking in so he can be the centerpiece of my blog, uh, or my blog again. Hey, oh, there he Dang! I thought he had a fresh haircut. He just looks fresh. I just look good. I'm always in. Too much branding. This is exactly why you're always one question or one comment away from being out. I walked into his office the other day and he says, hey, I saw your email. Has it really been your best year? Like, I'm saying that to like incite other people like for something. And so, you know, so that was kind of trigger number one. But trigger number two, then another guy emails me and he says, dude, I got to get on your level. And... What are you, is it like a like mental level? or? Like yeah, like just success or, or like, and he was being like, I, 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 I know who he is. We've had conversations. Am I portraying an image? And I know he doesn't feel this way about me, but like, am I portraying an image that, like, here I am standing on the mountaintop, and so you, if you wanna, if you wanna get here, you gotta work with me, kind of thing. I don't want to be that, and so it just, it really made me think about how easy it is to portray an image to other people, and we deal with this all the time, right? Like, social media is this way. You don't. You don't know. You don't know what I struggle with. You don't know what goes on in my daily life. You don't know the anxiety I deal with and trying to just keep my business on the rails. Like, yes, it's been a good year, but you don't even know where, where I'm at. And do you really want that? Like, why not figure out what you want and go after that instead? You want authenticity? This is authenticity. You always talk about, I'm, I lost out on, you know, $100,000 this year. Yeah. And I'm assuming those clients are still in your sphere to yeah. a certain extent. Yeah, they are. Can't imagine they're very happy about you saying very openly, oh yeah, you know, these people pretty much screwed me. The first one I, that I chose not to go back to, this was in the beginning of the pandemic and I did it because everyone thought they were all gonna get sick and so, I didn't want to be in person, I didn't have to, and then they shut their doors. The problem with that client was, was I was starting to see by doing some work with their employees that a lot of people were really frustrated with the owner, but they were afraid of him. The second one was the next day, they shut their doors. That one, I actually had the opportunity to go back into I had been in that office for 18 months, about 18 months. Well, in the year prior, we, myself, the director of operations, and another consultant helped to net that company an additional 50% in profit from the previous year to the tune of just over a million dollars. And yet, when the pandemic hit, the first decision they made was to cut their employees loose. And they literally said it was because they could just go collect unemployment. And we presented a proposal for them to ease into some scaling back and they didn't even hear it. They literally just said, no, we're, we're just shutting down. And so the following Monday, I sent an email to the owners and said, look, you didn't do anything ethical, unethical. You didn't break the law. I mean, at least not that I know of but everybody was for you. And when you had a first opportunity to be for them, you chose differently. I can't tell you how to run your business, but that's just, this is not how I will run a business. And I cannot continue to contribute in that way. And the thing that was the most telling to me was, is to this day, seven months later, six months later, I've never even gotten a response from them. This was not an insignificant Thing that I did. Yeah. Something you learned about yourself? No, it, 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 a lot. So I live by a quote. I've shared it before on the vlog. When C.S. Lewis says, it's not your business to succeed, but to do what is right. When you've done so, the rest lies with God. Take that. If I think about that quote, at the end of the day, I believe that God is sovereign. He is in control of all things. And yet I trusted that that was the right decision, that my wife and I had talked about it, we had prayed about it, and we came to the conclusion that I'm gonna do what I think is right, 
and God will answer. That doesn't always mean financial blessing. It just so happened that I started getting clients. And so this time around was the same thing. Like, yes, I gave up two huge opportunities. Originally, I, I, they were taken from me. Then I made a decision to not go back both times. And it's because I believe in doing the right thing. I'm not always gonna do the right thing. I screw up plenty and I make really bad decisions about all different types of things. I'm on the move, suckers. You think about all the ways that people, what the hell? Construction. The reason that I don't like sharing the story is because it worked out well. Because then people think, well, if I just do the right thing, then it's gonna come back tenfold, right? Or it's just gonna get better. I say caution, don't make decisions based upon that. That's like a bad dad joke, right? Take that. This is a meeting of the minds. What's going on in here? Shooting the shit. What are you shooting shit about? Apparently you're shooting shit. Oh. Well, now that you're in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> Another burn. <laughs> Every time.